We see in this example that we have a NAT router firewall that we've set up. And you can see the NAT internal firewall where the internal address is 10.0.0.1 and the external is 192.168.21.31. So our production subnet is going to be the 192.168.21 network. And then our POS network for our point of sale system is going to be the 10.0.0 network. And that's where our point of sale server and other cash registers are going to be used to conduct business with client information. And that client information should not be communicating with the production environment or with the internet. And so we use this Windows NAT firewall we're going to set up as a demonstration in order to protect this POS environment. And this helps us become PCI compliant. We're on a Windows 2019 server. I'm going to go into the Network and Sharing Center and show the current network setup. And we have an internal network and an external network just as shown in the last slide. And here's our external, which is going to be the 192.168.21 network. And this is dot .31. And then we see our internal network, which is going to be 10.0.0 with the IP address of 1. And we're only going to have a gateway on the external NIC, and that's because you can't have two default gateways. You can have a route going to other subnets, but you can't have two default gateways. Otherwise, the traffic doesn't know which way to go out. And we also don't need DNS on this particular NIC either because we have it on the other one. So now we're going to install the remote access server role from Server Manager. So we'll go to Add Roles and Features, and we get our wizard, and we're just going to continue on until we get to Server Roles. Now we're going to choose the Remote Access option, and we'll click Next. We don't need any additional features. Now we're going to see the option for routing. So we'll check the box for routing because that's what we want. And we'll click the Add Features, which come automatically with routing. And we see it automatically check direct access and VPN as well. And that's not a problem for us because we're not going to be using VPN, but it won't cause us any issues. And now we'll install. Our installation is complete. We'll close. And now we'll see a new application under Tools for routing and remote access. By default, it's going to be turned off, so we have to configure it, and there's lots of different ways to configure it. So we're going to choose the network address translation piece, which is going to hide our POS network from our production network. We'll choose network address translation. You see there's lots of other options here as well, such as the ability to remote access dial-in or VPN. And we used that back in the 90s and early 2000s for remote access dial-up, where we would connect using modems. And then the virtual private network in NAT is another option. But you have to have the server on the outside on the internet for one of your NICs and on the inside with the other. And we don't have that in this particular case, and we're not using VPN. And we have a couple other options as well. Now, this is one of the reasons why I named my network interface cards internal and external, and that's because this very spot right here. I want to make sure I pick the right one because it wants to know which interface is connected to the Internet so it knows which subnet to hide from the production network. I'm going to leave the basic name and address services for name resolution because we're going to need that. And we'll click Next and Finish. And now we're going to see some screens that pop up saying that things are being configured and eventually it will be enabled. And we'll see that red square on the upper left side turn to green. And now it's turned green. We can hit the expand button and go to properties. And we can see lots of different information, but it's not really useful for network address translation. Some of this information is good for VPN and other options, but not so much for NAT. And we're going to minimize and go into either a PowerShell command or a command line. It doesn't matter. They'll both give us what we need to get to this next step. We want to make sure that we can get out to the Internet and still get to our production environment. So I'm going to ping public DNS server, and we see we can get out. And I'm going to ping the domain controller. And we see we can get there as well. Now we're going to switch over to our POS server. First thing we're going to do is we're going to see if we can ping the internet as well. 
and we go back to that DNS server, and sure enough, we can. Now let's see if we do a trace route, what path it takes. And we see the first hop is going to be 10.0.0.1, which is our Windows Server NAT router, which is exactly what we want. And then it's going to hit the firewall. And the firewall has pinging turned off, so you're not going to see that. But then we see it goes on out to the Internet. So we know that it took the path out from our Windows NAT router. You can also take a look and just confirm the IP address, and we're on the 10.0.0.2 network. Let's also see if we can ping our domain controller in the production environment. And we can. So that's good. It's fine that our POS network can reach the production environment and the internet. However, we can't have the production environment or the internet reach into our POS subnet. So let's take a look from our domain controller perspective to see if we can get back in the other direction. We're in our domain controller, and I'm just going to open up PowerShell. And let's just confirm our IP address. And we see it 21.27. Now if we do an ARP space minus A, this will tell us of any devices that the server has been communicating with. And we see there's nothing in the 10 network. Let's see if we can even ping anything on the 10 network. And we cannot. So even though the POS subnet can't communicate with the domain controller and with the production subnet, we cannot go the other direction. So network address translation is working. It's hiding the IP information and blocking any attempts from our production environment to get into our POS subnet. Using Windows as a NAT router internally or on the internet can protect your internal IP addresses and computers from devices outside your local area network.